friends, my name is Avery and here are all 28 books that I ended up reading in July. So yes, I read 28 books last month, so let's talk about them. I'm going to talk about the books that I liked least first and then work my way up to my favorite reads of the month. My least favorite read of the month was definitely An Innocent Obsession by Jessica Kane. When it comes to Jessica Kane books, I either love it or I hate it. There's never really been a middle of the road book for me. It's either I like it or I didn't like it. And this one, unfortunately, I did not like. This one is a novella, like many Jessica Kane books. And this one is about a heroine who gets a new job at this office for this guy that she's been crushing on since she was like 12 years old. And she gets a job at his office and she comes to like bring him his paperwork. And the first moment that he sees her, he's like in love with her. And she's apparently been like stalking him for years as well and so that's how like she got a job with him it was not my thing was not floating my boat didn't care for this at all gave it two stars i ended up reading the entire shift series by ruby dixon and these are uh shifter books that ruby dixon wrote um all taking place in this small town full of bear shifters some humans know that they exist while others don't um they're each like either under 100 pages or just a little bit over 100 pages and so i'm going to talk about the books in this video because there's five of them i'm not going to talk about just the bind up by itself because i rated each book in the bind up individually because I, I read it as a bind up if i didn't say that already um so my least favorite book of that series was get your shift together which was book two so our hero in here is a bear shifter the heroine is not she doesn't know the bear shifters exist she goes to this small town where the hero is uh with her boyfriend in hopes of fixing their relationship because they like live in this like resort kind of camping place and so uh they go out into the woods to go camp and the boyfriend ends up like leaving her and dumping her and walking back to the um main site where the hero is working at and he realizes this and so he goes to like save her kind of from being abandoned in the woods he's like figuring out that that might be his mate or whatever but didn't really care for this at all like she broke up with her boyfriend that same day and she kept thinking about him while they were like talking and kept bringing him up. And then by the end of the day, they were like, we're going to be together. It just like, it didn't float my boat either. <laughs> then is book number one, which is Shift Out of Luck. This one, the heroine uh, works at a spa that was really recently put in the town. And that's like across the street from this... I think, think of it as like a hardware store. The hero works at this hardware store. He's a bear shifter. The heroine does not know that he's a bear shifter and they've secretly been pining, a, a pining for each other for a very long time. And then the heroine finally like admits her feelings or whatever. And he's just like, I don't deserve you, blah, blah, blah. It was short, it was fine. Granted, I only liked one book in this series. So that's why all these other ones are like duds kind of, cause I only really liked one of them. So I'll talk about that later on in the video. So book number four is next. We have, does a bear shift in the woods? This heroine, she is a wolf shifter and she lives in this town with the guy who's a bear shifter and he's the town recluse. And um, she's been tasked to make over the next guy that walks into this bar or whatever and then he happens to be that person and so she takes it upon herself to give him a makeover just like again didn't really care for it <laughs> 2.5 stars then there's no cover for book number five so i'm just gonna put the picture up of the bind up because it's only exclusive in this bind up you can't just read it on your own you have to read it within the bind up this one is called you gotta be shifting me another 2.5 out of 5 stars this is another human bear shifter pair up i don't even remember what happened in this one that's how much i did not really care about it <laughs> which is sad because i love ruby dixon but the these books were written quite a long time ago they were written back in 2016 you know, and so just like, I feel like Ruby has really grown with her writing. Then I have Burly by Jessica Kane, another Jessica Kane novella. This one, unfortunately, is definitely my least favorite, a part of the um, series that she's been writing that isn't really a series. She's been writing a lot of books where there's like bigger men in them and I really love them. This one wasn't my favorite. Basically, this is about our hero who's a bit bigger and he was in service. He was... I think he was in the Marines, if I'm not mistaken, or some branch of army um, with the heroine's dad. So he falls for his like best friend from the army's daughter. She becomes this celebrity. You read about her becoming a celebrity because she's a really good dancer. He's been basically like keeping tabs on her this entire time that she's been out in LA as a celebrity because um, they haven't seen each other in like a couple years. I did, I found this one kind of creepy, um, especially in the fact that like, I don't like when the hero secretly takes pictures of his love interest in this book and then does stuff to the picture like does stuff with while looking at the picture you know 
and like that skeeves me out. I get it if it's like a consensual thing. I find it very gross and creepy of you secretly taking a picture of a girl at the time because she was under, was she underage? I don't remember, but I think she was. And then you doing stuff with that picture. Just like, it skeeved me out. <laughs> Couldn't get past it. Another 2.5 out of 5 stars. Then we have Misadventures of a Virgin. And this one is a rivaling families romance. The hero and the heroine's families have basically been like rivaling for quite a long time. And the heroine's dad owns this resort, I think. And they're trying to buy out the hero's family's land to add on to their resort, even though they don't want to. And it's like their story about the two of them because they had their first kiss years ago and he kind of like ghosted her after that. So she's been kind of like put off by him and he's like trying to explain himself and tell her what happened and how he still has feelings for her and all this stuff. It just, it was a pretty average for me. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. There was nothing special about it. Um, I didn't necessarily hate it, but I didn't like it. Then I have a novella, which is Sweet Filthy Morning After by Christina Lauren. This is book number 1.5, a part of the Wild Season series. You read about this book to uh, get Ansel's perspective during book one, which is Sweet Filthy Boy. And so you read about his perspective. The audiobook was only like 30 minutes long for this. If you don't know about Sweet Filthy Boy, it's a romance where a hero and the heroine, they meet in Vegas, they jokingly get uh, married to one another one night and uh, she goes back to France with him because he's from France to see if they can make their marriage last, even though they barely know each other or should they annul it. Um, and so you basically read about Ansel's perspective during that whole situation because you didn't get his perspective at all in Sweet Filthy Boy. And I honestly felt like this just should have been added to the book, like to the main book. Like I didn't feel like this needed to be a little novella all by itself. It could have just been added to the main book. So I ended up just giving this one three stars. Then I have Buffy the Vampire Slayer Omnibus Volume 1 by uh, a bunch of different authors. Uh, I'll just say the first one is uh, Christopher Golden, okay? If you don't know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite uh, TV show of all time filled with vampires, slayers, humans falling in love with vampires, witches, werewolves, whatever the case. Super fun. I'm trying to read the comics and graphic novels because I've already watched the show a bajillion times, but I've never read the comics because they take, you're supposed to read them after the show. And so this one takes place before Buffy comes to Sunnydale in the TV show. I was looking forward to this and because I love Buffy, but honestly, it let me down a little bit. The first couple stories were really boring. There was one about Spike and Drew that I just did not care about at all. I don't really care about Drusilla and Spike before they met Buffy. I don't really care. The ones where we first meet, I think Dawn in um, those books, in the in the serial, what are they called? Like they're not volumes because this is Omnibus Volume One. Is it a volume? But whichever the case, the stories where you first, where Dawn is in it, uh, like those are good. My favorite one I think is like her with the bear. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. But I think my main, one of my main gripes is like, for example, there's this guy named Pike in here. You see him in like, think two different volumes in this uh, book. And in one volume, in the first one, he, like I didn't know how old he was because he had gray hair and like a goatee that was gray as well. And I was like, who, how old is this guy hitting on Buffy who is literally like 15? Like. How old is this dude? And apparently he's like a teenager and like he has gray hair and a goatee. And then in the next volume, his hair color changes and he doesn't have a goatee anymore. And like he has brown hair. And I'm just like, there was no consistency with the art style, even though they were made by different artists. I feel like they should have been consistent in somebody's hair color because they never even described, did Pike dye his hair? Like what happened? Like it just, it really confused me. So not necessarily my favorite, but I do want to read the rest. Then I have When She Dances by Ruby Dixon. This is book number five, a part of the Rizdiverse series. This is an alien romance series where um, the main plot point is like human women finding mates with aliens. And then it also involves this farm planet where there are many human women refugees there. And so our heroine in here, she's actually a slave um, and she dances in the front of this like pleasure house basically. And the hero works at a shop across the street and he sees this girl dancing in the window every day. And they kind of have like longing looks at one another. And she has this dream that he will sweep her off her feet one day and like buy her out of slavery. But he doesn't think that she would ever want him because he has like cybernetic parts in him and he has metal limbs and everything because he was in a bunch of accidents and he was in the war. So uh, he's like, no woman like that would ever want me. And then he learns that she is about to be sold because the facility that she works at is getting closed down. And so he's like, I have to save her. And so he saves her and he buys her and he tells her like, hey, if you are with me for a little bit, like we're, we pleasure each other, whatever, um, I will end up sending you or bringing you to Rista 3 where there are a bunch of refugee human women 
and you'll be free for the rest of your life. She was like, okay, sounds amazing, sounds great. Little did they know while, while they get it on together before she goes to this planet, they may fall for one another. There's obviously a trigger warning here for slavery because that's talked about a lot. I'm honestly just not the biggest fan of the like transaction of sleep with me and I will do this for you kind of thing, so. That was in here and it wasn't my favorite thing ever. So I just gave this one three stars. Then I have Misadventures on the Night Shift by Lauren Rowe. This is a celebrity romance. The heroine works at a hotel and she works at the night shift of this hotel and she works at, uh, is studying to become a lawyer during the day. And her longtime childhood crush celebrity named uh, Lucas Ford like checks into the hotel and he kind of like asks her to be his muse because he's there writing songs and everything and so it's a relationship between the two of them and he asks her to pretend to break up with him or like be with him for how long however long he's staying at this hotel and then break up with him in the end so he can write the perfect breakup song they may actually fall for one another during that period of time this was fun for me i i normally hate celebrity romance books like i don't like them there are very very few i can maybe just pull up less than five that I actually enjoyed. Um, this one was okay. I didn't hate it, which is saying a lot. <laughs> My whole gripe in here is kind of like a spoiler, so I'll be very vague. But basically the way that the hero acted at the end of the book was the way he should have reacted to the, the fake breakup. Like that's how he should have reacted and I hated how long of a time he had to realize that. Like it, it made me upset. And they didn't really get discussed at all how long a period of time it took him to realize this. I did though really enjoy how like he used her and their experience to write amazing songs. I thought that was pretty cool. So I just gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I have Laura Dashwood Missed Out by Tessa Dare. This is book number four, a part of the Spindle Cove series. This one is about a woman who was previously kind of like ghosted by this guy she had a childhood crush on for a very long time. She like used that inspiration of like being kind of like jilted by him to make this paper or this essay that got really kind of like viral in the community. And it's called Lord Ashwood Missed Out. <laughs> and she basically talks about how um, this guy will never get to experience what I have to offer in life because of what he did. And she becomes quite popular and people kind of put two and two together about who Lord Ashwood is, because there's really a Lord Dashwood out there. And so um, people kind of like ridicule him. And so the beginning of this book is about the two of them having to be forced into sitting in a carriage ride together, because they are like having to share the space to go to a certain destination. Their carriage may or may not get um, like stranded in the middle of nowhere and they have to like find shelter together and are forced to confront their issues and problems. I personally loved in this one how you got to see some of the previous characters from Spindle Cove pop up in here it was really fun. A bunch of the heroes did a bunch of things in here and it was really funny to me. The main reason why I did not love this one is because of the hero. Like I didn't even understand why he left her in the first place when he like ghosted her at first. Like I still don't even understand that. I, after I read it, I still didn't understand. I also am not that big of a fan of couples lying to one another constantly and that's what happened in this one so I just gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I have Hard Hitter by Serena Bowen. This is book number two a part of the Brooklyn Bruiser series. This is a hockey romance series. This is a romance between the captain of the hockey team who has some um, trauma past trauma um, from being a foster kid and this is his relationship with Ari who is like the team's yoga instructor and masseuse. Overall, this is just a basic hockey romance to me. Nothing too special about it. I prefer book one to this one. I'm currently reading book three and I'm loving it. Um, so I just give this one 3.5 out of five stars. Like it's just nothing too special about it. I will say there are some trigger warnings in here for domestic abuse, drug use, and there is a shooting in here. So please beware. Then I have uh, The Ice Duchess by Tracy Sumner. Uh, this was kindly sent to me for a review by uh, NetGalley and the publisher. So thank y'all so, so much for sending this one my way. This is about Georgiana and what's his name? Dexter. Dexter. Georgiana and Dexter. They were childhood friends. They both like liked each other, but then I don't remember why, but she had to, well, I guess she, like her parents forced her to get married to like this 70 year old count. And she kind of like got mistreated by him. And it's years later, the Count has died and the hero like comes back to town because um, he's a geologist, I'm pretty sure. And uh, he finds fossils and rocks and all that stuff. So I love a good nerdy hero, a scientist hero. And they meet up at this party again and they get in kind of like this bet 
relationship kind of thing. And Georgiana is quite different than what he remembers as a kid because of what she's experienced with her previous husband. So like he's trying to like show her how she can still be that woman and like her her abuse does not define her, you know? Sorry if it just got dark. The sun just went behind a cloud or something. <laughs> um, but I just gave this one four stars. I enjoyed it. I love childhood friends to lovers romances. However, I didn't really believe the romance 100%, you know? I feel like the author like told us a bunch between the couple instead of showing us stuff that happened between the couple. I think that it would have been amazing if we got like flashback scenes to when they first fell in love because they did fall in love like before they, before she was married, you know, like, but they never revealed their feelings for one another, you know? But I would have loved those scenes like going flashing back or whatever, and we never did. So I felt like we, I didn't really get to see them fall in love, you know, like they still held this torch for one another, but I didn't really get to see them fall in love. And so that's the reason why I gave this one four stars instead of five. Then we have A Grift for Drenal by <laughs> Ruby Dixon. This is a novella, a part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This is number 17.1. This is just a tale about one of the human alien children and him befriending kind of like the tribe Grump. And I thought it was so cute. I loved this one. It's one of my favorite novellas, a part of the series for sure, and I gave it a four out of five stars. Then we have the only book that I liked, a part of the Shift series by Ruby Dixon, which is Shift Just Got Real. This is a romance between Ryan and Mal. Mal is a bear shifter and Ryan is not. She is a human. So Mal ended up meeting Ryan at a grocery store a couple years ago. And right when he saw her, they, he knew that they were mates. However, he is way older than her and she is underage. So immediately after that point, he like basically becomes the town recluse. He shuts himself off to never see her until the time is right, basically. Ryan is now 21 and uh, she's had a crush on Mal for years. Um, and so this is kind of like the story about her finally telling him like, hey, I like you too. I don't care how old you are. I really like age gap romances and I really liked this one, especially when it came to like a bear shifter aspect in here. It was really cool. There's this cute caretaking scene between the two of them because he gets injured at one point. Um, so I really liked this one and gave it a four to five stars. Then I have Rookie Move by Serena Bowen, which is book number one, a part of the Brooklyn Bruiser series. This is book one to Hard Hitter that I talked about a couple minutes ago. This is a hockey romance and this is a second chance romance as well. The hero and the heroine ended up dating in high school the heroine got sexually assaulted so trigger warning for that because there is a discussion about her sexual assault in high school after that experience she believes that the hero deserves better than what she's been through and the stuff that she's going through at the moment so she breaks up with him it's years later they're both done with college she works for this hockey team called the brooklyn bruisers where her dad is the coach the hero ends up becoming the new player on this hockey team and so they're both forced to confront their previous feelings and relationship and talk about why their relationship ended in the first place because the hero it was very confused as to why this was a reread for me i read this i want to say a year or two ago and i really liked it i gave it the same rating i gave it four stars i reread it to just continue on with the rest of the series because it hasn't because i whew, i can't talk <laughs> because i haven't read the rest of the books yet then i read forbidden fling by cat taylor which is the pen name for katie robert katie robert wanted to write some novellas that didn't really have happily ever afters they were just like novellas that were hot and fun and and so this is the first one that she's written and I like this one. It was fun. It was really fun for me. This is about a woman. She goes on this vacation with her boyfriend. However, the boyfriend brings a bunch of his friends and his dad with him. It's like their beach house. And she's just like put off. And her boyfriend isn't really like taking care of her or putting her needs first at all. And so his dad is like, hey, do you want to get it on? And she's like, okay. <laughs> and so they hook up together at this beach house and yeah. It was hot, it was fun. I liked it, gave it four stars. Then I read Stalked by the Kraken by Lillian Lark. I love Lillian Lark on TikTok and so I decided to pick this one up. I was in the uh, monster romance moon. So this one is a tentacle romance. This is a romance between a witch and a Kraken shifter. The Kraken one day ends up uh, scenting the heroine and knows that that is his mate, but he doesn't want to scare her. So he kind of like stalks her um, <laughs> to like figure out who she is, like what she likes, um, where she works and stuff like that. And so um, he realizes that she's a matchmaker and she works at this like bathhouse where people get it on in this bathhouse in order to um, provide power to the people in the bathhouse. And so he comes up to her and he's like, hey, 
I want to be matched with somebody, but I don't want to be matched with someone you pick for me. I want to be matched with you. And she's like, what? Um, so it's like a relationship between the two of them that grows into more because she just thinks it's this, this, because she just thinks it's this um, short term thing when he's trying to convince her, no, you're the love of my life. You're gonna be with me forever. <laughs> Who knew that a tentacle romance could be so sweet? The hero in here is so sweet. I loved him. I honestly can't wait to read the previous book in this series and to read more from Lillian Lark. I really like this one, gave it four stars. Then I read Steph's Outcast by Ruby Dixon. This is the most recent release of uh, the Ice Home series, book number 14. This is an alien romance series where human women have crash landed on this ice planet and um, it takes place in the same world as Ice Planet Barbarians, but this takes place on a different camp. And so the heroine ends up um, befriending this uh, alien guy who was outcasted by a previous clan and his adoptive son. And so it's kind of like a single parent romance as well. The heroine befriends them, but then these creatures start popping up on the beach that they live on and she gets injured. And so he takes her back to his cave. Things go from there. I really loved the single parent aspect of this book because we haven't really gotten that in a Ruby Dixon book before because all of the previous characters have kind of like been unmated, you know? I really like how Steph like fully embraced being a mother in here, really liked that. There's also bisexual representation here. Um, Steph is bi and so she talks about that a lot and her like previous longing for some of the women even on the camp, which we've never read about before in this series. One of the main things that I loved about this book was Steph and um, the representation when it comes to her body. She talks about a lot about her mid-sized body and we don't get a lot of that in um, romance books. We don't. We get a lot of the skinny minis and we even get more plus size women than we do mid size women. I personally am a mid size woman. I have a mid size body and so I love to see that representation in a book and I just loved how I got to see myself and Steph in that way. So I really enjoyed that. I can't wait to read the next book in the series. I'm so excited, but I gave this one a four to five stars. Then I have Only When It's Us by Chloe Lise. Uh, this is a college romance. The hero and the heroine sit next to each other in this uh, college class, the heroine asks the guy who's sitting next to her for uh, the class notes because she missed it by being on a soccer thing because she's a soccer player and he doesn't respond to her and she thinks that he is a giant jerk for not responding to her when in actuality he's deaf and he cannot hear her. And then they're forced to work on a project together in this class so it's kind of like a frenemies to lovers kind of thing and she kind of like eats crow once she realizes that this guy is actually deaf and he's not just trying to be a jerk. I really liked this one. Um, I first gave it five stars but I'm lowering my rating down to a four and I might just not even read it in general. I'm not sure yet. I've read a lot about and heard a lot about people um, who are part of the deaf community who did not really like the representation in here when it came to the deaf hero. And just like the heroine's relationship, uh, not relationship, her, the heroine's um, thoughts when it, like, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Um, reaction, that's the word I'm looking for. The heroine's reaction to him being deaf and him using, I think it was, hearing aids. I think he was using hearing aids. I don't think it was a cochlear until um, later on in the book, but he ends up getting hear like using hearing aids one day and she is so mad that he is wearing hearing aids and didn't tell her because she could have said something to offend him, you know? And like, it just, that pissed me off. I recently watched Crystal's video about where she DNF'd this and she found it highly offensive and I totally understand that and reflecting back on this book and reading about other people and their opinion on it. I don't really know how to feel about this book. It definitely has now left like kind of like a bad taste in my mouth because I don't want to like a book where the disability representation is misrepresented, you know? So I'm gonna have to like reflect on this book more, I feel like. I do want to read the rest of the books in this series because I've heard amazing things about them and I have heard from people who um, are a part of the um, disability community uh, and who have the disabilities represented in the next books that feel totally seen and valid in those books. I feel like just this one is probably the outlier. So unfortunately I did have to lower my rating with this one. There's also a trigger warning in here for a loved one with cancer. So beware, cause that made me sob. Like there's this whole thing that made me sob. So I love this book, but I definitely think my opinions of it have changed since reading it. Then I have A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. I was originally sent this book by Valentine B.R. So thank you so much Valentine B.R. for sending this book my way. I have a physical copy as well as an ER copy. Um, the physical copy is upstairs. So I, I can't go upstairs right now, <laughs> but I don't really want to describe this book because I feel like anything that I say could spoil it for you. And I recommend you go into this book completely blind because man, was that the best experience going into this book blind. Um, there were so many twists and turns and shocks 
so cool. I'll tell you that this book reminded me of A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This book is for more adult. They're, they're, this book is adult, not young adult, but it does remind me of two young adult books. Um, it reminded me also of Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lady Taylor. So like both of those books kind of reminded me of this one. There's way more part of this book and more to talk about when it comes to this book, um, but I don't want to spoil it. Like anything that I say, I feel like could spoil it for you. It is like fantasy, it's paranormal. There's fae, vampires, magic, like so many different things in here. That's all I'm gonna say about it. I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. Next we have all of the five star books that I read this month and I read so many five star books. <laughs> First, I have I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. I know the title and the cover look crazy and you wouldn't think that this book is a five star, but it is, I swear. I love alien romance books. So I love this, okay? It reminded me of Radiance by uh, Grace Draven. And if you didn't know, that's my favorite romance book of all time. So I loved this. Uh, this is a romance between a human woman who lives on this farm planet. She loves farming and she ends up kind of like getting in this male order bride kind of situation with Axel. I think that's his name, Axel, who is the lizard man here and being on his planet with his people and his tribe. And um, they get married and it's kind of like a friends to lovers situation. They slowly become friends with one another and um, it grows into something more. And it is so cute. It is so cute. If you love uh, alien romances, please pick this one up. Then I read Between Dawn and Dusk by Jamie Schlosser. This is book number 0.5, a part of the Between Dawn and Dusk series. Um, I read book one, which is The Fake King's Curse. Uh, last month and I really enjoyed it so check out last month's wrap up if you want to know about book one um, but this one is the prequel to that and you read about the romance story of the hero's parents and the hero's parents were um, both royalty but they were a part of rivaling royalty families and once they look at each other one day they know that they're mates the heroine gets locked up in like a tower by her father because he does not want them to be mates because they're rivaling families. And then the hero ends up rescuing her and saving her from this tower and they go back to his land. And it's a really amazing novella. I loved this one. And I honestly wish that it was a full length book because I would have loved it also. And yeah, I gave this one five stars as well. Then I have Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This is a mafia romance book and this series has kind of like taken romance book two by storm and I totally understand why. This is an enemies to lovers romance where the hero and the heroine are from rivaling families. Again, I love the rivaling families trope if you did not know. And um, they both hate each other. Um, Callum is the hero, he's quite older than the heroine. Her name is uh, Ada. Ada may or may not accidentally like sneak into his house and accidentally set his house on fire. And in order to resolve their issues with their families, their, uh, their parents end up putting them in an arranged marriage with one another. And so, they have to get married to one another, even though they hate each other. <laughs> and at points they're trying to kill one another, like they hate each other so much and play pranks on each other. It's honestly hilarious. I was laughing out loud so much with this book. Obviously with them like playing pranks on each other and trying to kill one another, they slowly start to realize that they might actually love each other. Loved it. It was great. Another thing that I loved about this book was Ada and the love of her body. She has a mid-sized body, a curvier body. And she talks about how she does not give a crap what other people think about her. She's gonna eat what she wants to eat. And yeah, she doesn't care what people think. And I, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Five stars, great. Can't wait to read the rest of the books. Oh my gosh, next is an amazing one. We have When She Belongs by Ruby Dixon. This is book number four, a part of the Rose of Our series. And I loved this. I loved this. This was so good. This book is probably one of the longest alien romance books I've ever read, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. There was a trigger warning in here for previous sexual assault, so just please be aware of that. Um, I really recommend reading the book that is before this one, before you get into this one, um, because you meet the heroine in the previous book and you can like figure out her journey and everything in the previous book. So book number three in the series, I really recommend reading that one before this one. Um, this one is about Sophie and Jurok. And Sophie is human. She was rescued in that previous book um, from being an alien like slave. She gets rescued by these guys and works on this spaceship with them. Um, and these guys are trying to like go on this adventure kind of thing, get this expensive item. They're space pirates. And so they're like, okay, we wanna keep Sophie safe. So let's put her on this um, abandoned asteroid with our mutual friend in hopes of just keeping her there on this asteroid while we go find what we need to look for um because we don't want her to be in danger or whatever and so they take her to this planet and there she meets Jurok who is an ex-soldier who has um prosthetic limbs and um he's very grumpy and um 
a recluse. He doesn't want to uh, have any woman there with him. He, does, he just wants to live by himself for the rest of his life on this abandoned asteroid. He reluctantly likes this, like, fine, she'll stay with me, whatever. They're in this, like, forced proximity together of them having to be on this space station on this asteroid and um, they slowly start to fall for one another. It's very much a grumpy sunshine situation. Oh my gosh, I loved their romance so much. You got to see them grow and slowly start to love one another. And it was so sweet. I loved this. Then I have Phoenix and Bound by Grace Draven. Oh my gosh, another amazing romance. Uh, this is a fantasy romance. I love Grace Draven. Grace Draven is a goddess. I love her. This is about Jolene and Azarion and their romance. So Jolene, she is a fire witch and she can also cast illusions over herself. And so every year um, in this empire, a woman from each village uh, is taken and then burned at the stake as a sacrifice at the start of this empire ritual thing, whatever. And so the heroine decides to disguise herself as a new woman each year for the past five years in hopes of no woman actually dying from her village because when she gets burned at the stake at the empire, she um, pretends to be burned on fire, but no fire can burn her because she has fire powers. Um, and so she ends up walking back to the village after the whole experience. And that's been happening for five years. And another ritual that happens to these women that are taken is uh, the gladiator slaves that are there end up um, picking one of the women to be with and possibly sexually assault because they're not for it um, before they are burned on a pyre. And so the hero is one of those gladiator slaves um, and he realizes that this woman has been coming here for five years and he's the only one that can see through her glamor that she has over herself. So he decides to come up with this plan and uh, basically blackmails her into helping him escape captivity and slavery. Um, there's also a trigger warning here for sexual assault because he gets sexually assaulted by the um, queen of this land and like it it's pretty it's like kind of graphic on page so just please be aware that's the only time you really see that so like that wasn't my favorite thing but the romance in here totally made up for it because after she ends up like helping him escape like she's like okay bye i helped you whatever see you never and she ends up walking away and he gets on a horse runs by her, sweeps her up, and kidnaps her. And he ends up taking her to his village and he is like, I need you to help me um, take back my crown because he was the ruler of his village. He needs her help to do so. So it's a kidnapping romance. It's enemies to lovers because they hate each other. They're bickering with one another all the time. This book really reminds me of A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. So if you like that book, try this one out. Really liked it five stars. Lastly, my favorite book of the month is most definitely Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese. I loved this book, y'all. I know not a lot of people will probably. It just connected to me so much. I love this one. This is a college romance. The hero is a TA. He also has a stutter and he's always been very self-conscious about the fact that he has a stutter and he's kind of like used speech therapy and gotten it down. But whenever he's nervous, especially around women and girls, it comes out more. And so the heroine in here, she is actually one of the students in the class he is the TA for. And the first moment that she sees him, she's like, I want him. I want him. So she's kind of like the pursuer in this situation. Uh, we have a virgin hero in here. He's a virgin hero. He's so, so sweet. I love him. And we have a woman like kind of like pursuing the hero more. And I love that. I kind of like want to go reread it right now. <laughs> like now that I'm talking about it because it was so cute and sweet. And Theo, the hero in here, is the kind of hero that I want. Like he is, he's so sweet and caring. And oh, I love him. I want him. So yeah, this one was five stars for me. I loved it. So there you have it. Those are all 28 books that I read in the month of July. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.